Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Carrie Justick, and today I'm sitting down with the breakout star of HBO's hottest new series, Euphoria, Hunter Schaefer. The show follows a group of teens who are navigating drugs, sex, love, and social media, all while exploring their own complex backstories. But one of the most interesting might just be Jules, the new girl in town who's captivated both the show's different characters and its growing audience. Let's take a look. Want to come over for dinner tonight? Uh, I wish, but my dad wants to have like a capital F, capital D family dinner, which is weird because it's literally just me and him eating dinner together like every single night. <laughs> well, um, what about later? I'm um, probably gonna do some homework, binge watch some Madoka Magica. Okay, well, um, maybe you could like come over Sunday night because my mom's like asking me and stuff. Are you talking to your mama about me? No. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Bye, Rue. Oh, bye. Hunter Schaefer, everybody. Hi. Okay, everybody is like very loud, very pumped for you to be here. Thank I was you. hyping her up backstage and she was kind of having a holy shit moment. Um, is it settling in that the show is really taking off? It's been like the past two weeks, I think, that it's like kind of clicked. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's really wild. <laughs> it's really weird. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's taken some getting used to. Yeah. Well, of course, we're all huge fans of the show. And we know a lot about Jules. But we don't know a lot about Hunter. So I just wanted you to kind of give us a little bit of your backstory. You're only 20 years old. This is the first show you've ever done. Um, how did this all happen? Yeah. Um, I was uh, I was like a full-time model in New York. Uh, these were my, my tromping grounds. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and I remember seeing like a, an open call floating around on Instagram and like hearing buzz about this open call for this project. And I don't think it even had a, like a name at that point or it had a name, but like it wasn't out. Uh, and, uh, I was like, Oh, that's cool. They're casting a trans girl, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and um, and then a few days later, my model agency called me and said I had been like called in to audition for this role. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'll give it a shot, I guess. Uh, and I mean, I had like had some interest in acting, but never really given it like a like a shot or like actually tried. Um, so yeah, I got the sides. I went in. Um, and then kept getting called back. And like, meanwhile, like, you know, I was getting ready to go to school. Like I wanted to be a fashion designer. Still, still do like at some point, that'd be cool. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just kind of kept going. And then like, you know, a month or two later, I like, I'm in the, the final audition, like with a bunch of HBO execs in LA and, <laughs> And I uh, found out later that day that uh, I was going to be playing Jules. So. so you tripped and fell into Euphoria, which is wild. Yes. And obviously, there are two big names attached to the project. Drake is a producer and Zadea, you star alongside. And the two of you obviously have an extremely special connection um, on screen. But what was it like to go into this project knowing that these two people were attached to the project and it's it's your first. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really know until, until like, I think being attached or, like, mm -hmm. actually having, having gotten the role. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, like, Z and I didn't really, like, do a chemistry test or anything. Uh, and in that sense, I think we got really lucky that, like, we just, like, click really well. And then... Uh, and then also like having Drake is obviously amazing, you know, as a part of this like whole world that uh, this team has built. So, yeah. I love that you call her Z. 
Oh. Like, that's when you know it's real. Like, oh. She has, like, a cute little nickname. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that. That's what everyone calls her. Yeah. I love that. Um, and obviously, Sam Levinson is also the creator of the show, which, I, I mean, you guys speak so highly of him. And one of the really cool things is I know that you talk about kind of filling in the pieces of Jules and who she is, her identity, and all of those things. Um, I want you to talk a little bit about that, how that even happened, and why it's so important because I know, like you said, it was like a casting call for a trans character and that's so cool. But the way that they do it in this show is so, so unique. So what part of that was kind of your doing and what was Sam's? Yeah. I mean, before I was attached and I like had just gotten, uh, I think I had gotten the first four scripts when I was auditioning. Um, but even before I got the full scripts, I guess I was a little nervous because uh, like the three scenes that I got to audition with were, I don't know for who, who like, who's been watching, but, uh, but, Everybody. <laughs> um, um, but like the kitchen scene in the first episode, the motel scene in the first episode, and then, uh, uh, oh, the, the dick pic tutorial. Um, You're like not <laughs> messing around. Yeah. So I was like, what <laughs> is this? Um, but, uh, but I mean, as soon as I got those episodes and was kind of able to really like read the entire progression of the first four, it really like made sense. And it kind of like uh, dawned on me that, you know, Sam was incredibly talented and like empathetic and like had an understanding of uh, like all his characters in a way that I wouldn't have like necessarily expected from like like a white cis guy. Yeah. Um so uh so yeah and then um once I got the role I mean the first thing we did uh, they kept me in LA a few extra days and uh just so that Sam and I could have like a meeting that went hours long at this uh, at this coffee shop and we just kind of like delved into each other's lives and it was like just a matter of like cuz he's he's written himself into all these characters in some it, in a lot of ways and then uh and then um figuring out how some of my story can fit in as well and so that we can really like flesh her out and um and that's what ended up happening so it's it's a weird little like concoction what do you think makes you most similar to Jules? Mm, I mean, I if I had access to the clothes that Jules has access oh to in the yes. show, I know my 17-year-old self would have been wearing like everything that she has. Yeah. yeah. The hair and makeup is unreal and the wardrobe. We yeah, that team is absolutely incredible and we had so much fun. That was also like really collaborative as well. Uh you know like Every time we had to establish a new makeup look, Donnie and I would just like, we'd be like, all right, so what's it going to be today? Like what squiggles or lines or sparkles yeah. can we, you know, throw on my face and uh, like, yeah, figure out what works for the scene. That's so, so fun. Um, one of my favorite parts of the show is obviously the way that they establish everybody's backstory. Um, and for myself, and I'm sure a lot of others, yours was definitely the hardest to watch. Um, I've watched it a few times now, and every single time it kind of takes me back. And you you kind of, like, lose your breath. Like, it's, it's scary. Um, how did you... What was your process? Like, did you get to look at all of that, look at this young kid going into a psychiatric ward, like what kind of care went into writing that scene? Um, and even though you weren't playing young Jules, obviously, like what was it like to watch that? Yeah, um, so for this particular section of the story, uh, that is something that is really personal to Sam's life. And, um, and I remember reading that and being like, wow, like this is this is really visceral. And I think he said in like an interview, um, just kind of how surreal it was to uh, like be shooting that and walk into a space that looks so similar to, you know, a place he was at that age. And uh, and so uh, and so I think, yeah, that that sector of her story was written like with a lot of care and emotion and uh um I don't know I have a 
a lot of respect for Sam for sort of like ripping himself open for that for that part. What were some of the hardest parts for you to film? Or for you to even like read when it came to who Jules is and like the exploration of her character? Like, was there any scene that you were like, okay, I'm kind of scared to do this or you had to, I mean, obviously you have to get really vulnerable, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, I would say the kitchen scene was really, that was a hard day. Uh, just um, not only because it's like a rough, scene for Jules uh but it's also I I was also like still feeling like really really new to acting and I think I was like really nervous about like being able to deliver and like I don't know I still had some imposter syndrome at this point as far as like uh um being a new actor among like all these like really experienced people and uh and so um, I like locked myself in my hotel room all day and like listened to Frank Ocean and Serpent with Fee and like basically by the end of the day and we shot this at like two in the morning, I was exhausted mm -hmm. and then was like even more terrified of like being able to do what I felt like I needed to do for this scene. Um, but Jacob like, is, has been amazing scene partner and like gives himself to every single scene and it's just I, I admire him as an actor so much and so uh I think like just actually letting it play out was yes terrifying but also uh uh I don't know yeah um so that was a hard one yeah. um and then I don't know I think as I think as the series like progressed and we kept filming and everything started to feel more real I think the entire cast can agree that like the lines between <laughs> what was real and what wasn't like got blurry we filmed this for eight months so uh uh it it got a little confusing but in some ways it made it easier because everything felt more real and more uh like visceral so I mean like you said your first time acting, Jacob's been, I mean, everybody knows him from like Kissing Booth, obviously, amazing. Um, but there are a lot of people that this is like their big break and then there are other faces that we've seen before. Um, what has that been like for you? Like, is there any mentor, mentee kind of situation going on on set or like how did this whole blended family come together? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think just, just, having to film something like this project together and be that vulnerable in front of each other like brings anyone together pretty quickly uh just because i don't know like in some ways like so a lot, some of my closest friends haven't seen me in the states that i've had to be in on set you know mm -hmm. uh so i mean just to have to kind of expose yourself like that in front of everybody like everybody's seen them so seen each other like at their best at their worst uh so that brings everyone together um and then also I think we got really lucky because there truly is not like a bad apple on this cast mm -hmm. like everyone is just I don't know like such a sweetie and uh, there's nobody you're voting off the island no absolutely yeah. not <laughs> Um, one of my favorite things also about Jules is that, I mean, she's such a free spirit. Um, and I think for her narrative, it's particularly interesting because we've seen so much in the past, like when you have this person who is struggling with like their gender identity, um, there's there seems to be one narrative for trans characters. And this has completely broken the mold. Um, why do you think like, this was the perfect opportunity to do it? Why do you think audiences are ready for it? And like, do you feel a burden being the person at the center of that? Because I'm sure a lot of people are like, this is historic. We see this trans character who's not just coming right out and saying like, this is who I am. Like there are some cues, but you kind of like have to figure it out. And out of the bunch, she seems to be the most secure in who she is and has to just deal with some external drama. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of my, like, favorite things about her is that that's resolved, and I think it just, 
allows her to have issues outside of that. And I think it like is a worry that we can fall into the same storyline sometimes because a lot of the times it's like cis people in the writing rooms and like cis people making the decisions. And, um, and I think like a lot of minorities can agree that like, uh, you know, oftentimes uh, their like systematic oppressors might only see them being able to tell a specific kind of story. And so, uh, and so like just uh, having like, or being allowed to move beyond that and, uh, and like bring some truth in that, uh, you know, like trans people deal with everyday things and things that cis people deal with. Uh, I mean, and and while transness may affect the way you move throughout the world, uh, you know, we're, we're more complex than that. And so, um, so, I don't know, I just feel like really lucky and that I really enjoyed telling this story. And, uh, and yeah, uh, yeah. That's awesome. And how have audiences responded to Jules's character? Um, I mean, it's it's kind of been a roller coaster, I think, because uh, I I think everyone like liked her a lot at first, uh, especially after the kitchen scene. They were like, "Yes, like she's a badass." Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, and then now Jules is getting some flack because Jules is stressed out, and <laughs> um, and uh, things are complicated. And I don't want to I don't want to like give spoilers, but uh, but. Um, yeah, I, from what I've seen, I think people are a little more like, okay, she needs to get her, get her mess together. Like, uh, just, uh, cause it's affecting the people around her too. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. When you guys were filming, did you read the entire season? Cause like even downstairs where, I mean, you're saying like everything's so complicated. There are a million questions. Like even with you, like I want to know what's going on in Jules's head with her relationship with Rue. And then Nate is a whole other mess and like, God bless. I don't know what's going on there. Um, so like, did you have those same questions as you were going through and filming or did you guys know how it all wrapped up at the end of the season? No, we were getting episodes all the way up until like, I think we got the final draft for eight, like, like, the same week that we started shooting it uh or it's some or something really close like that uh so and we were just get, they would kind of drop them as we kept moving throughout the season so we were in suspense the entire time and uh um and then I think it, it's also kind of cool that it like played out that way like he was writing as we were still making it because uh because you know when when we actually film the scenes, they might turn out like different than the way Sam was anticipating. And that's another like really cool way that Sam works is that, uh, you know, he's really open to uh, whatever is happening, whether it's like happening within the chemistry of the characters or, or whatever, like, like he's down to just like see what happens. And so I think, uh, uh, that was really cool in that, uh, you know, I think the story morphed in ways that even he wasn't expecting as we were filming. So, yeah. Um, and then you touched upon it a little bit, but family and friends watching the show, what's, <laughs> what is that like? Um, it's, it's cool. Uh, I mean, I, I'm really proud of this project and like, uh, and so obviously it's um, important to me and, um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it it was a little scary, like... Uh, you, like, run out of the room or anything? Uh, yes, I, I don't like watching with some of this yeah. stuff, uh, like, with anybody. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I think, like, with my parents, like, I told them even before I, like, got the role that uh, I was auditioning for something, and it was, uh, it was you know, a little explicit, and... Um, uh, but it's a cool story, and um, and and then so like actually having them see it, I think they were prepared at this point, uh, and uh, I mean as prepared as they could be, you know. I think witnessing yeah, you, it is a you different weren't thing. even prepared doing it. So. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so yeah, I mean it's it's scary. Like 
like being that vulnerable with everyone who's watching it, I guess. But uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, the show itself is like scary. Yeah. Like there are parts where like I don't know how to explain it to some people. Like some of my friends, I'm like, you have to watch it. And they're like, is it scary? I'm like, no, but yes. Yeah. I mean, it's not like horror, but I mean, it's it's kind of scary in that it. Well, it's so real too. people. Yeah. 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 Um, and then going forward, where would you like to see Jules go? Um, like for this season? Well, yeah. Or or next. Um, yeah. Without I, any spoilers, uh, obviously. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm a rule shipper. I, oh, I, okay. Like, I, I didn't even know rule was a thing. Rules. Like, I didn't hear about that. Okay. It's I'm our behind. ship name. Uh, <laughs> Ruin Jewels. Um, yeah, I... I, I, I'm a rule shipper and, um, you know, I, I would hope to see more of that. Um, but then also I need jewels to like, uh, I don't know, like I want (laughs) bad things to happen to Nate and I wouldn't have a problem (laughs) with jewels being the perpetrator of those bad things. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. That's just like from my perspective on where we're at right now. That's that's what I'll say. Are you allowed to be a rule shipper? Yeah. As you, but like that, it's kind of like bias. Z is a rule shipper too. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we know what's going on. Um, we have three audience questions. Hi. Hi. Um, so because the show is so raw, and because you're having to do these scenes that are so raw and vulnerable. Is there anything that you specifically do to prepare for, like wind down from the role to get into character and decompress afterwards? Yeah, um, it's been a massive learning curve, I think, throughout the season because uh, like when I was filming the pilot, I had a completely different like perception of how to like go about that than I do now and um, and I think it was just like, um, uh, like, like messing up, and then trying something different, and then like taking advice from the rest of the cast and Sam. Uh, it w- it's really different, like for every single scene too. Um, but I mean, what's helped, I think, is like music, like I said, Frank Ocean does pull through for some of those scenes where you need to get in your feelings or, um, yeah, I don't know, like I have little playlists uh, also for like specific like characters or um, or like a certain mood. Um, and then also just kind of, I don't know, Sam always tells us to let go, uh, like as we're filming and just like stop, uh, like, I don't know. He can like see right through you and like what's going on in your head, and uh, Ed will just like like clock us and and tell us to stop doing whatever we're doing in our head. And usually that's just like, ah, you know, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I can imagine it's weird too because you're like filming these scenes together, and then after I would be like, I need to be alone. Yeah, uh, that's another thing that's that's been weird, especially like further into the season, is that uh, it, like it's 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 hard to like come out of that and then like be okay uh and then also just like those feelings like you take home with you whether you like it or not and so uh like making the distinction between what's yours and what's the characters definitely and then another audience question hi there hi um at 48 i just recently transitioned it took me a long long time to figure out myself i commend you so much for being so young and just representing and being being your truth thank you and i'm so we're so happy for you so we're out there we're in tv we're in film <laughs> where do you think we'll be in 5 years in 5 years or sooner oh come on maybe holograms <laughs> <laughs> um, i don't know i think 
Uh, in other words, will we be even more accepted? Because, I mean, your character is so amazing. People are like, wow, so that's a trans person. And it's just like, this could be just my, my classmate. So I'm saying, will it become more and more normal? Like, oh, yeah, that's my trans. I mean, will we even be classified as a trans feminine person? Or just, hey, this is right. Allie and this is Jules. Well, I hope that's what we move towards. Um, and uh, also, I mean, I think I hope to see, uh, like, a broader acceptance of like the entire community, uh, you know, um, and I think moving forward, I mean, it's 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 really cool to be here as a trans person, but I think it's also like it doesn't go without saying that like I'm white and I'm skinny and like I I pass and you know like that's that's like it, those are all factors whether we like it or not that got me here in this place, and so I think uh, uh, like. In the future, I hope uh, you know, no, the doors can continue to be open for like the entire community, everyone. Yeah, yeah. I love that you asked that because I know people are talking about this as a Gen Z show. Um, so one of the things I was thinking about is older generations, like looking and seeing how lucky Jules seemingly is because, like you said, this is something she's resolved at such a young age. So I'm sure that's that's really really cool. Thank you for asking that. And we have one more question. Hi. Um, was there any specific scene or person that you were kind of anxious to film with? Um, yeah, I mean, a, a few. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I would say, like, the kitchen scene again, uh, just because, I, I don't know, Jacob's, like, one of the loveliest people you'll ever meet, but, like, when he gets into character and he's, like, shirtless and like sprayed down with oil and he's like really yeah. tall too yeah. uh and like when he's screaming and shattering glass like yeah. he scares the shit out of me it's so. really scary um um yeah and um i don't know same thing with eric like super sweet guy but when he's in character you know it's a different story it's a little it's a little scary probably the guys that i don't know a lot of the guys on our show are like little messy yeah, yeah. <laughs> not to mention it's Eric Dane like that's yeah huge <laughs> actually yeah I didn't I didn't know like here it is guys. I didn't I didn't know who mixed team he was I was gonna say <laughs> you didn't watch Grey's Anatomy no I didn't watch it oh um, my gosh but uh but now I know and <laughs> now we know Hunter's character flaw there it is <laughs> Well, thank you so, so much. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of the show and I can't wait to see where it goes, where Jules goes. Everybody check out Euphoria Sunday night on HBO. Thank you.